Karen, have you heard about that famous bakery downtown? The one that was featured on that popular cooking show last week. Oh, yes. I saw it on TV. Their Mont Blanc looks absolutely divine. The way they layered the chestnut cream and meringue was simply mouth-watering. Be a dear and pick some up for us, would you? I've been dreaming about trying their pastries ever since I saw the show. Sure, I know the place. It's called Sweet Delights, right? We can all enjoy it after dinner. I've heard their chocolate eclairs are to die for as well. Sounds lovely. Can't wait. It'll be such a treat to have some gourmet desserts. It's been ages since we've had something really special. Actually, on second thought, I'll just get some for you and Bob. We won't be having any ourselves. I know how much you've been looking forward to it, though. What? Why not? I thought we were all going to enjoy it together. Is something wrong? Remember, Emma can't eat eggs because of her allergy. It wouldn't be fair for her to watch us eat it, so Jack and I will pass, too. We don't want her to feel left out or tempted by something she can't have. Oh, come on. Don't be such a party pooper. It's just a little dessert. Surely you can make an exception this once. I was looking forward to a nice family dessert time, and now you're ruining it. Can't you just let Emma have a tiny bite? It's not like she'll keel over from a crumb. I'm sorry, but Emma's health comes first. We can't risk it, even for a special occasion. I'll make a special allergen-free dessert for us so we can still have family dessert time. And that way, everyone can enjoy something sweet without any worries. You're making cake? From scratch? You? I don't mean to be rude, but I've never seen you bake anything more complicated than slice-and-bake cookies. Yes, I've been trying out some new recipes lately. I've been taking some online baking classes to expand my skills, especially in allergen-free baking. There are lots of egg-free and gluten-free dessert recipes online. I found some really creative alternatives that taste just as good as traditional desserts. But those never taste as good as the real thing. Blech. I've had health food desserts before, and they're always dry and flavorless. Are you sure you want to subject us all to that? Why don't you let her have just a little bit of the bakery dessert? It'll be fine. A tiny taste won't hurt her, and she'll get to experience what real dessert tastes like. Eggs are crucial for a growing child's nutrition, you know. All this fuss over allergies seems a bit extreme. Back in my day, we didn't have all these food sensitivities. Karen, even a tiny amount of egg could be dangerous for Emma. She can have trace amounts of flour, but eggs are completely off limits. We've been over this before with her allergist. The first time she accidentally ate egg, she went into an anaphylactic shock, and we had to rush her to the ER. It was terrifying. We almost lost her. I never want to go through that again, and I certainly don't want to put Emma through it. But there's no reason to completely cut out eggs from her diet. That was probably just a fluke. Children need to be exposed to different foods to build up their immune systems. You should be gradually exposing her to build up her tolerance. That's what my friend Susan did with her grandson's peanut allergy. And now he can eat peanut butter just fine. Being overprotective isn't good for her, Sarah. You're going to make her afraid of food. We've been over this before. Allergies don't work that way. It's not about tolerance. It's about avoiding the allergen completely. Emma's allergy is severe and life-threatening. This isn't something we can just get over with exposure but she's four now she's probably outgrown it why don't you try giving her a little children often outgrow their allergies you're making a mountain out of a molehill absolutely not that's way too risky we're not experimenting with emma's life just to satisfy your curiosity or prove a point unless it's under a doctor's supervision we're not testing her egg allergy at home it's far too dangerous, and I won't put my daughter at risk like that. Even with an EpiPen, it's too dangerous. Anaphylaxis can escalate quickly, and an EpiPen isn't a guarantee. We need to avoid the allergen entirely. You're worrying too much. It's just an allergy, for heaven's sake. You act like it's a terminal illness or something. 
This is why young mothers these days are raising such weak children. All this coddling and overprotection is making kids soft. Back in my day, we were more relaxed about child rearing. We let kids be kids and they turned out just fine. That's why all the kids were so healthy. We even let them play in the dirt to build up their immune systems. None of this obsessive hand sanitizing and allergen-free nonsense. Yeah, I remember running around the neighborhood barefoot as a kid. We'd be out from dawn till dusk getting into all sorts of scrapes and adventures. That sounds about right for you. Always coming home with scraped knees and torn clothes. But look how strong and healthy you turned out. You did mention growing up in the country, didn't you? I bet that was a wonderful childhood, full of fresh air and freedom. Yep. Spent my summers jumping in the creek and eating crawfish we caught ourselves. We spent hours building forts in the woods and having mud fights. Mom would just hose us off before dinner. You did all that, huh? It sounds like you had a lot of fun as a kid. But you have to admit times have changed. And we know more about health and safety now. See? And look at how healthy he is now. Not an allergy in sight. It's because he was a little wild child back then. All that exposure to nature and different foods made his immune system strong. You should let Emma have some adventures too. All this sheltering isn't doing her any favors. But that has nothing to do with allergies. Jack didn't have a life-threatening allergy as a child. Emma does. It's not comparable. Of course it does. It's all about the immune system, isn't it? If Emma had been exposed to more things as a baby, maybe she wouldn't have developed these allergies in the first place. I'm just trying to give you some advice here. You should be more grateful. I raised two children without any of these problems. I know what I'm talking about. You always have to argue, don't you? Can't you just listen to your elders for once? You're really not a very lovable daughter-in-law, are you? Always so defensive and argumentative. It's no wonder we don't get along. Mom, that's totally uncalled for. You're crossing a line here. Sarah's putting our daughter's needs first. She's being a responsible parent, not argumentative. Oh, so now my own son is turning against me? I can't believe this, after all I've done for you. Are you saying I'm wrong? That I don't know how to raise children? I raised you, didn't I? And you turned out just fine. Not everything you say is right, Mom. Especially when it comes to allergies. Sarah's done a lot more research on this than you have. She's consulted with doctors and specialists. This isn't just her opinion. Times have changed, and we know more about allergies now than we did when I was a kid. We have to adapt and do what's best for Emma. So you two are ganging up on me now? I can't believe my own son would choose his wife over his mother. This is outrageous. This isn't about taking sides. It's about Emma's life being at risk. We're not trying to gang up on you, Karen. We're trying to help you understand how serious this is. You're being dramatic. All this fuss over a little food allergy. It's ridiculous. A little food isn't going to kill her. You're acting like I'm trying to poison her or something. Mom, you really don't get it, do you? This isn't about us versus you. It's about keeping Emma safe. Do you know what anaphylactic shock is? Do you understand what could happen if Emma eats even a tiny bit of egg? No, I don't. Enlighten me, since you two seem to know everything now. It's when an allergic reaction becomes so severe it can be fatal. That's what happened to Emma when she was little. It was terrifying. Her throat started to close up. She couldn't breathe. We thought we were going to lose her. Uh, I didn't know. Was it really that bad? That's why we're so serious about this. It's not just us being overprotective or difficult. We need you to understand, Karen. This isn't a game or a power struggle. It's about keeping our daughter alive and healthy. Sarah, is this your doing? Have you been poisoning my son's mind against me? W what do you mean? Don't play dumb with me. You know exactly what I mean. You've been talking to my son behind my back, haven't you? turning him against me with all this allergy nonsense. He just calmly explained allergies to me. Since when does Jack know anything about medical conditions? And he seemed a bit angry, too. That's not like him at all. What have you been telling him? Karen, you keep trying to force Emma to eat eggs. 
You never listen when I try to explain her allergies. You dismiss her concerns and act like we're just being difficult. Using my son against me? You sneaky little. I can't believe you'd stoop so low. Well, I get it now. You've managed to brainwash my son with all this allergy hysteria. Allergies are more complicated than I thought. I'll give you that much. I understand it's not something that just goes away easily, but I still think you're making too big of a deal out of it. Yes, we'll have to deal with it together. But don't think this means I agree with all your overprotective nonsense. What a hassle. It's like having a child with a chronic illness or something. It's practically a disease at this point. I can't believe my granddaughter has to deal with this. I suppose you could look at it that way. It is a chronic condition that we have to manage carefully. We just have to learn to live with it. It's not ideal, but it's our reality, and we're doing our best to give Emma a normal, happy childhood despite her allergies. I wonder whose fault it is that she was born with such a troublesome condition. These things just don't come out of nowhere, you know. When Excuse me? What are you implying? When there's something wrong with a child, it's usually the mother's fault. That's just how these things work. You must not have taken proper care of yourself during pregnancy. Did you eat a lot of eggs when you were expecting? Maybe that's why Emma's allergic now. What do you mean by proper care? Are you suggesting I did something to cause Emma's allergies? There's no history of allergies in our family. Jack never had any issues with food and neither did his sister. If there's any genetic influence, it must be from your side. Your weak genes are probably to blame for this. It's because of your family's poor health that you gave birth to such a fragile child. It's a shame, really. How can you say something so cruel? Do you really think I would do anything to harm my child? That's horrible. You're blaming me for a medical condition that I have no control over. Why are you being so nasty over a simple allergy? This isn't anyone's fault. It's just something that happened. I'm just stating facts. No need to get so defensive if you know you didn't do anything wrong. Sarah, you're still young. You should have another child. Give it another try. A healthy one this time. One without all these issues and special needs. And make it a boy while you're at it. Every family needs a strong, healthy son to carry on the family name. How can you say such things? Are you implying that Emma isn't good enough? That we should replace her? Were you unhappy when Emma was born? Did you resent her from the start just because she's a girl? Of course a boy would have been better, especially for the first child. Don't pretend you weren't hoping for a son too. My husband and son were overjoyed with a girl, so I didn't say anything. But I was disappointed when I heard it was a girl. I had hoped for a grandson to spoil. And your daughter isn't even that cute. If she's going to be a girl, she could at least be pretty. If she had taken after me, she might have been a bit prettier. But I suppose with your genes, that was never really a possibility. You felt this way all along? I can't believe what I'm hearing. How can you be so heartless about your own granddaughter? So have another baby. Give me the grandchild I deserve. Maybe this time you'll give birth to my ideal grandchild, a strong, healthy boy without all these issues. With all due respect, we don't need a replacement for Emma. We're not going to have another child just to please you. She's our greatest treasure, allergies and all. We love her exactly as she is. Please don't ever say such horrible things again. I won't stand for you insulting my daughter like this. Mom, what's going on? I just got home and overheard the end of your conversation. What's all this about having another baby? I thought you were making dinner as a nice gesture, but... What's that smell? What? I'm just making dinner like I said I would. Is there a problem? Oh no! There are eggs in this! I can smell them! Mom, please tell me you didn't use eggs in this. Oh god. I'm so glad I tasted it before Emma did. Jack, you're right. There's definitely egg in here. There's raw egg in the sauce. I can see the little yellow flecks. Karen, how could you? Eggs trigger her worst allergy reactions. You know this. We've told you this countless times. Oh dear, I must have mixed them in by mistake. You know how forgetful I can be sometimes. It wasn't on purpose, so you'll forgive me, right? 
No harm done since Emma didn't eat any. There's no way this was an accident. You deliberately ignored our warnings and put Emma at risk. We don't even keep eggs in our fridge. We avoid them completely for Emma's sake. You deliberately brought eggs and mixed them in, didn't you? This was a calculated move. Well, you're the one who gave birth to an allergic child. Why should the whole family have to suffer? I don't care about a grandchild with all these issues. I just wanted to make a nice family dinner like we used to have. Why should the whole family have to give up eggs for her? It's not fair to the rest of us. That's just wrong. We shouldn't all have to change our lives for one picky eater. Mom, do you really not care what happens to your granddaughter? I can't believe what I'm hearing. This could kill her. Do you understand that? We're not exaggerating when we say her allergy is life-threatening. You're being dramatic again. It's just a little egg. It's not poison. Her body would just swell up a bit. Maybe she'd get a rash or something. It's not the end of the world. Besides, don't you have that EpiPen thing? That would take care of any reaction, right? You're always going on about how you carry it everywhere. That's not the point. An EpiPen isn't a magical cure-all. It's emergency treatment for a life-threatening condition. I don't want my daughter to suffer. Even if we could treat a reaction, why would we deliberately expose her to something that could harm her? Well, I don't really care either way. If you're going to be so sensitive about it, maybe you should just feed her separately. I can't believe you're saying this. Do you have any idea how hurtful you're being? Hurry up and have another grandchild for me. One that can eat normal food and doesn't need all this special treatment. I'm done with this granddaughter. She's too much trouble. I'm bored of her. All these special needs and dietary restrictions. I can't forgive this. This is the last straw, Karen. Neither can I. Mom, I think you should leave. Now. You'll see. We're not going to tolerate this behavior anymore. Hey, wait a minute. What do you mean, leave? This is my house, too. Is anyone home? Why aren't you answering me? Bob's gone on a spa trip with his friends. He won't be back for a few days. I know that. I'm the one who suggested he go on that trip. I'm asking where you all are. Why is the house so quiet? Jack, Emma, and I are staying at a hotel tonight. We don't feel safe in the house with you anymore. What? You're staying at a hotel? Without telling me? I didn't hear anything about this. When did you decide this? What am I supposed to do for dinner? I was counting on eating with the family. We're eating at a hotel restaurant. They have a wonderful allergen-free menu that's safe for Emma. I left some cup noodles for you in the kitchen. There's a kettle if you want to boil water. That's it? Cup noodles? You expect me to eat that processed junk? From now on, cup noodles are all you're getting from us. I hope you like them because that's your new diet. I won't be cooking for you ever again. Not after what you try to do to Emma. If you want a home-cooked meal, you'll have to make it yourself. But given what happened today, maybe you should stick to things that don't require cooking. But since your cooking skills are abysmal, cup noodles are probably better anyway. At least they're not dangerous. I can cook just fine. How dare you insult my culinary skills? Then by all means, go ahead. Cook whatever you want for yourself. Just keep it away from Emma. Oh, and just so you know, we won't be giving you any more spending money. You're on your own financially from now on. You'll have to use your own pension for food from now on. And for everything else, too. What? You can't do that. That's my money, too. If I had that kind of money, I wouldn't be asking for your help. You know my pension barely covers anything these days. What's going on here? Why are you suddenly treating me like this? How do you think you can get away with treating me like this? I'm family. I'm your mother-in-law. This is the consequence of your own actions, Karen. You brought this on yourself. Actions that made us never want to see you again. You've pushed us too far this time. This is what happens when you try to feed eggs to Emma, when you deliberately ignore her life-threatening allergy. That was just a little joke. I wasn't really going to let her eat it. I just wanted to see how you'd react. A joke that could have cost Emma her life. Do you think anaphylaxis is funny? Even an EpiPen isn't foolproof, you know. It's not a get-out-of-jail-free card for allergic reactions. Really? Is that true? 
I thought those things fixed everything. Yes. If the reaction is severe enough, it might not work, or we may not be able to administer it in time. If her airways swell up, she could suffocate or suffer brain damage from lack of oxygen, even if she survives. That's how serious food allergies can be. It's not just a rash or an upset stomach. Don't underestimate anaphylactic shock. It's called shock for a reason. I, I didn't know. I didn't realize it was that serious. Jack is furious with you too. You've really crossed the line this time. Of course he is. You put your daughter's life in danger. Did you think he'd just laugh it off? But Emma didn't actually eat it, did she? So no harm done, right? So it all worked out. You don't need to be so angry. Everything's fine. You and my son are overreacting. It was just a little misunderstanding. I can't believe you're still saying things like this. After everything we've just explained to you. You clearly don't understand what you've done at all. Or maybe you just don't care. You're the one being dramatic. Making a mountain out of a molehill as usual. Even if you're angry, saying I can only eat cup noodles from now on is going too far. That's cruel and unusual punishment. I'm going to tell Bob about this when he gets back. He won't stand for this kind of treatment. He'll kick you out of this house when he hears how you've treated me. Just you wait. Why should I be the one to leave? We're not the ones who endangered a child's life. This is completely unfair. You're the one who should be leaving, not us. It's not right. You can't just do whatever you want and expect no consequences. No, it's not unfair at all. We're protecting our daughter from someone who's shown they can't be trusted. Bob loves his granddaughter. He's always been supportive of how we manage her allergies. Of course he's going to be angry at you for almost killing her. Do you really think he'll take your side on this? Stop exaggerating. You're making it sound worse than it is. She wasn't about to die or anything. You're being hysterical. She didn't even eat it in the end, so what's the big deal? She was this close to eating it. If I hadn't noticed the eggs, who knows what would have happened. I might not have noticed if I hadn't happened to taste it first. Do you realize how close we came to disaster? If she had taken even one bite, who knows what would have happened to Emma? Are you really willing to gamble with her life like that? The first time she went into anaphylactic shock, she was in a coma for a while. We almost lost her. Do you want that to happen again? What? Was it really that bad back then? I don't remember it being such a big deal. I knew she was rushed to the hospital, but was it really that serious? She was in critical condition for a while. The doctors weren't sure if she'd make it. I've told you about this before, Karen, multiple times, but you never seem to listen. Bob remembers when I told him about it. He was horrified and has been extra careful ever since. I don't remember. Are you sure you told me? I think I'd remember something like that. Of course you don't. You never listen to anyone but yourself. You always act on your assumptions without hearing people out. And that's why we're in this mess now. I'm sorry, okay? What more do you want from me? But it can't be helped. I'm old, you know. My memory isn't what it used to be. Yes, I'm old, so I can't remember everything people tell me. You should be more understanding. You're not even trying to remember. This isn't about your age. Don't blame it on your age. You're perfectly capable of remembering things when you want to. All right. I get it. You're angry. I've said I'm sorry. What more do you want? I'm apologizing. Isn't that enough? Why do you have to keep harping on about it? I'm sorry for not listening properly. There. Are you happy now? Now let me get back in the house. It's getting cold out here. I'll get heat stroke out here. You don't want that on your conscience, do you? I have a message from Bob. He called while you were out here ranting. He says he's divorcing you. He can't believe what you've done. What? Divorce? You're joking, right? Bob would never do that to me. Looks like you're the one being kicked out of the house, Karen. How does it feel? Goodbye. I hope you learned something from all this, but... I doubt it. Wait a minute, you can't just leave me out here. Why should I be divorced over something like this? It's just a little misunderstanding. This doesn't make any sense. Bob loves me. He'd never do this to me. Actually, we were planning on moving out ourselves. We didn't want it to come to this. We were going to cut all ties with this house, find a place of our own where Emma would be safe, to protect Emma from you, 
But Bob said he'd rather kick you out than see us leave. This is too much. You've turned my own husband against me. How am I supposed to live on my own at this age? I've never had to take care of myself. My pension alone is barely enough to scrape by. How do you expect me to survive? That sounds like a you problem. Maybe you should have thought about that before you endangered our daughter. But you brought this on yourself. Actions have consequences, Karen. What? How can you be so cold? I'm family. My granddaughter's life was saved, so forgive me already. Why are you being so vindictive? The punishment doesn't fit the crime. You're going too far. You're overreacting. This is cruel and unusual punishment. We're not just angry about yesterday's dinner incident. This has been building for a long time. We're also furious about your cruel words. The way you've treated Emma, the things you've said about her. What did I say? I don't remember saying anything cruel. Who was it that called Emma weak-blooded? Who said she wasn't cute enough? Who suggested we have another child to replace her? Oh, well, I didn't mean it like that. You're twisting my words. You said all sorts of horrible things, like how we should hurry up and have a boy to be the heir, how you weren't happy when a girl was born, how you're bored of Emma. There's no point in playing dumb. It's all there in our text history. I've saved every cruel, thoughtless message you've sent, every insult, every dismissal of Emma's condition. But I wanted a male heir. That's normal, isn't it? Every family wants a son to carry on the name. Okay, maybe calling her weak-blooded was a bit much. I shouldn't have said that. I might have said some things I shouldn't have because I was irritated. You know how I get when I'm upset. I'm sorry about that. Can't we just forget about it and move on? You're only apologizing now because you want to come back inside, aren't you? I don't believe you're truly sorry at all. You're just sorry you got caught and are facing consequences. But I am sorry, really. Can't you see how sincere I'm being? I promise I won't say bad things about Emma anymore. I'll be more careful, I swear. If you could change your ways this easily, we wouldn't be in this mess in the first place. People don't change that quickly, especially not at your age. Please, I'll do anything. Just forgive me. Just don't kick me out of the house. Where am I supposed to go? No, we've given you too many chances already. Why not? Don't you believe in forgiveness? It hurts when people won't listen to you, doesn't it? That's how I felt all this time. Every time you dismissed Emma's allergy, every time you suggested we were overreacting. I'm sorry, I really am. Please, give me one more chance. People who never listen to others eventually find that no one will listen to them. And then they end up all alone. That's where you are now, Karen. Mom, that's enough. We've heard all we need to hear. We can't have you here anymore. It's not safe for Emma and it's not healthy for any of us. Jack... Even you're kicking me out? Your own mother? Mom, your behavior has gone too far. We've tried to be patient, tried to explain, but you refuse to listen. You put Emma's life in danger. Not just once, but repeatedly. We can't risk that happening again. And I can't forgive the hurtful things you've said about my wife and daughter. They're my family too, you know. But I'm your mother. Doesn't that count for anything? Yes, but now it's my turn to protect my own family. My wife and daughter need me and I choose them. You need to go back to your hometown. We've arranged for you to stay with Aunt Martha for a while. My hometown? That old place is barely livable anymore. There's nothing there for me. That's your problem, Karen. You've burned your bridges here. There's nothing we can do about it. You made your bed. Now you have to lie in it. But what about money? How am I supposed to survive? We'll give you a little to get started. That's all we can do. We're not responsible for you anymore. You'll have to figure out the rest on your own. Get a job, apply for assistance, whatever you need to do. I, I can't believe you're treating me like this. After all, I've done for you. Karen, one last thing before you go. People can change, but it requires genuine reflection and a real desire to be better. Think hard about what happened here and take a good look at your own behavior. If you do that, maybe someday we can reconcile. But it will take time and real effort on your part. <sighs> All right, go pack your things. I'll call a taxi for you. It should be here in about an hour. Fine. I can see I'm not wanted here anymore. I'll go. Jack, I got a message from your mom. Should I read it to you? 
Yeah, go ahead. What does she say? Here's what it says. I am truly sorry for everything. I've been reflecting deeply on my actions since I left. I feel terrible for putting Emma's life at risk. I deeply regret what I've done and all the hurtful things I've said. From now on, I'll be more mindful of my words and actions. It's okay if you can't forgive me right away. I just wanted to sincerely apologize for my behavior. Wow. Mom seems to be seriously reflecting on her actions. I didn't expect that. Yeah, but I still find it hard to believe. She's apologized before and then gone right back to her old ways. Me too. But at least she's apologized. That's more than she's done in the past. True, but we still need time. It's too soon to let her back into our lives. Yeah, you're right. We need to be cautious. Emma's safety comes first. Exactly. We'll see if her actions match her words over time. Agreed. Let's give it some time and see if she really changes. Sarah? Jack? Hello. I hope I'm not interrupting anything. Hello, Karen. This is unexpected. Hey, Mom. What brings you here? Um, I have something I'd like to talk about. Would you listen to me for a few minutes? Sure. Go ahead. We're listening. I've been thinking a lot over this past week. About everything that happened. About how I've been acting. I finally understand how terrible my actions were. I was so caught up in my own beliefs that I couldn't see how much harm I was causing. I'm so sorry for putting Emma's life at risk. For ignoring your feelings. I truly regret everything. My behavior was inexcusable. Mom... So, I decided to educate myself about allergies. I've been reading medical journals, joining online support groups, even talked to a few doctors. It really is a scary condition. My ignorance caused all this trouble. I had no idea how serious food allergies could be. Karen. And all those things I said about wanting a boy, not being happy about a girl, being bored, that was absolutely awful of me. I'm ashamed of myself. Each grandchild is precious, regardless of gender. Emma is a wonderful little girl, and I was too blind to see it. I was such an idiot. Can you ever forgive me? Karen, I never expected to hear you say all this. It's a lot to take in. Mom, I'm honestly surprised. This doesn't sound like you at all. You know, I actually joined a support group for families dealing with allergies in our community. It's been eye-opening. Listening to their stories made me realize how ignorant I've been. How much unnecessary stress I've been causing you all. From now on, I want to better understand Emma's allergies and support her. I want to be a grandmother she can rely on. Of course, only if you'll allow me to. I understand if you need more time. Karen. Mom, you're really trying to change, aren't you? This seems sincere. Yes. Though it might be too late, I know I've caused a lot of damage. To be honest, Karen, I still can't fully trust you. You've hurt us too many times. But I can see that you're making an effort. That means something. Maybe we can work on rebuilding our relationship little by little. It won't be easy, but if you're truly committed to a change, we can try. Yeah, we can't go back to how things were right away. We can move forward slowly, one step at a time. Really? Thank you so much. I promise I won't let you down this time. But you have to promise me something. This is non-negotiable. Never put Emma's life at risk again. Not even as a joke or a test. And respect your family's decisions, even if you don't agree with them. Of course. I promise. Absolutely. Emma's safety comes first, always. And Mom? From now on, let's all work together to manage Emma's allergies. No more undermining our efforts or questioning our methods. Yes, of course. If there's anything I can do to help, just let me know. I want to learn and be supportive. All right. Well, how about we start with something small? Would you like to come over this Sunday? We're planning to make some egg-free and gluten-free treats with Emma. It could be a good opportunity for you to see how we manage her diet and still make delicious food. Really? I'd love to. That sounds wonderful. I'll do my best. I'm looking forward to baking with Emma. Maybe she can teach her old grandma a thing or two about allergen-free cooking. Sounds great. It'll be fun for everyone. It's a good first step. 
Yes, let's make this a new beginning. A fresh start for all of us. Thank you, Sarah and Jack. You're being more understanding than I deserve. I'll work hard to truly become a part of this family. The kind of grandmother Emma deserves. Karen, let's do our best together. For Emma's sake. And for all of us. That's right. This is the real start of our family. All of us. Together. After that day, Karen truly changed. She became passionate about learning about allergies and always put Emma's safety first. She attended allergen awareness classes, learned to cook allergen-free meals, and even started volunteering at a local food allergy support group. The family bonds grew stronger over time. Karen's efforts to educate herself and change her behavior didn't go unnoticed. Sarah and Jack acknowledged her progress and gradually rebuilt their trust. They started including her more in family activities, always with clear boundaries and expectations. Emma was able to enjoy a good relationship with her grandmother, free from the tension and danger that had existed before. Karen became one of Emma's strongest advocates, fiercely protecting her from potential allergen exposure and educating others about the seriousness of food allergies. The whole family found a new level of happiness together. Sunday baking sessions became a beloved tradition, with Karen, Sarah, and Emma experimenting with new allergen-free recipes. Jack marveled at the positive change in his mother and the newfound harmony in his family. Through this experience, they all learned valuable lessons. Karen learned the importance of listening, empathy, and putting others' needs before her own preferences. Sarah and Jack learned about the power of setting firm boundaries and the possibility of genuine change. And Emma grew up knowing she was loved and protected by her whole family. The journey wasn't always easy. There were setbacks and moments of doubt. But with patience, communication, and a shared commitment to Emma's well-being, they forged a stronger, more understanding family unit. In the end, what started as a story of conflict and misunderstanding became a testament to the power of love, education, and personal growth. The mill from hell transformed into a loving, supportive grandmother, and the family found a happiness they never thought possible. <laughs>